next video, we will go ahead and discuss um, taxonomy. We'll be teaching about you, uh, teaching you guys about taxonomy. So that is going to be the science of naming and classifying organisms. So the scientist that actually takes charge of doing this is called a taxonomist. So his job is actually to study these organisms and then to determine their relationship with one another, and he'll start putting them into groups. Um, so actually, the first taxonomist in 1750, his name was Carlos Linnaeus. Um, he actually came up with this naming system that was that's called binomial nomenclature. So bi means two, right? Um, does that mean that the naming system um, includes two words? Yes, absolutely. So this is a two-word naming system, and it's universally known because it's actually in the Latin language, and Latin is considered to be universal. So, um, so if I lived in Switzerland, okay, so if I go to Switzerland and, uh, and um, a honeybee bit me, would, would I go to the hospital or the doctor and say, hey, a honeybee bit me? Well, it will not be called a honeybee because that is the common name here in the United States, but in Switzerland we call it a spindle. Oh, okay. So the common names are very different. So the United States and Switzerland, the common names are going to be different. Yes. So this is why it would be beneficial to go ahead and have a, a universal naming system. Very good. Absolutely. Um, so, and by the way, I, I said if a, if a bee would bite me, I understand sting. So yes, if a bee would sting. All right, anyway, moving on. So, oh, if I say Apis mellifera, will someone know that in Switzerland? Yes, because Latin is a universal language, and that's why um, Carlos Linnaeus came up with the binomial nomenclature. Nice. All right, so um, binomial nomenclature actually consists of, um, a, well, it's a two-word naming system, we know that. So the first word, we have an example here. The first word is called the genus, and the second word is called the species. Um, so, in this particular example, Apis would be the genus, and then the species would be Malifera. Good, I also, also noticed that the genus is capitalized while the species is not. Is there a reason for that? Yes, there are rules. So, um, I do believe Linnaeus came up with these rules as well. So, the genus will always be capitalized, and the species is never capitalized. And there's also a second rule. So, the second rule of thumb is going to be that the uh, scientific name, so Apis mellifera, has either has to be underlined or italicized. I just couldn't do a good italicized handwriting there, so I just went ahead and underlined it. So what else can the scientific name tell us? Well, if two organisms share the same genus, so two different organisms share the same genus, then they are going to be related, actually. So, here, like we said, here's our example. So, Apis mellifera is going to be uh, the honeybee. So, uh, actually, other varieties of bees will also have the same genus, only they will differ in species depending upon the type of bee. So, um, is the, um, so now you tell me. So, is the genus and the species the only taxonomic group that these guys fit into? No, we have a whole list of them. There's actually eight. We start with the domain, mm -hmm. and then we end up with the species. We just looked at the genus and the species in the example of the honeybee. But the honeybee has a family, an order, a class, a phylum, a kingdom, and a domain. Nice. So, um, it, is domain very broad, and does it include everything? Yes, we group very broadly first for domain, and then very specific when we get to the species name. So. How am I going to remember the order of this eight-word eight-word uh, classification system? Well, we have um, help for that by saying because we just look at the first letters, okay, and then we can say, "Dear King Philip, came over for great spaghetti." Oh, that's a great mnemonic device. I like that. So, "Dear King Philip, came over for great spaghetti." That sounds great. I'm really going to remember it that way. So, since we said that uh, domain is going to be the broadest, how many domains are there? There's three. Three domains. We have the bacteria, okay. we have the archaea, okay. and the eukarya. Nice. So, between all, we only have three domains, and all organisms fit into those three domains. Perfect. Yes. 